Good morning and welcome fellow YouTubers. This is Jack Jet. We're at the Williamsburg Jamestown Airport in Williamsburg, Virginia. Call sign is Kilo Juliet Golf Golf. And we're looking at the new Coronado S550. And we're going to go through some of the functionality and features of the aircraft and unfortunately some of the things that are not quite working properly. As you can see the thrust reversers as the aircraft was spawned are setting out and that's not how they would be stowed. Okay. And as the aircraft spawns it shows it has uh, covers on the engines and some cones to protect it. We'll go ahead and remove those now and open the main door and remove the static system. We'll put on the ground power unit. These items will be useful while I'm trying to display some of the features of the aircraft. Now I want you to notice that the air, we're outside the aircraft. We have not been inside the aircraft. The power is off. There is zero residual pressure in the thrust reversers. And yet they will stow without power or residual pressure. That's not correct. Okay, let's move inside. All right. And uh, for the ease of operation, I'm going to stow both of the pilot's yokes. I have installed the plane sense, excuse me, plane command feature, which is a downloadable app. And hopefully it's going to work this morning. Battery on. Battery on. Okay, so we got that working this morning. All right, I'm going to go over here. Basically, it's a horseshoe pattern from the pilot seat. Let's go back around and start with the area. All right. You can see that there are uh, headphone jacks plugged in and that there is a oxygen panel uh, on the same armrest pad. It's supposed to be set in normal as it is. There's a gauge on the other side, and we'll refer to that shortly. But as the aircraft is spawned, the mic to the mask is on rather than the headphone mask. That's an incorrect initial setting. So we'll come out of that corner. And there's your uh, cork-filled glass holder. Not round, but stop sign-sided, eight-sided. And uh, there's your pilot side uh, fuse panel. And we'll sort of move over this way just a little bit because we're going to show some items down here that are, will be easier to see now. Here's your fuel selector. So if you have a fuel imbalance or you have a single engine event where you're having a fuel imbalance, in other words, say for the sake of argument, your left engine fails what you'll end up with is a uh, situation where the fuel starts to be used out of the uh, right side fuel tank and not the left side. So you'll build up an imbalance. And the maximum imbalance in this aircraft is 600 pounds from one side to the other. So what you'd have to do is turn the fuel switch and you'll see the light above it when you turn it to the left to use the of course, it always goes the wrong way, depending on your mouse wheel. You'll get an in-transit light. Now, that just means that the switching is all matching up. And now you're taking fuel only from the left side, which is the heavy side, and putting it into the right under this scenario. And when you've finished refueling, you'll turn it back to off and the in-transit light should be off by that point when you change it back to off. It's a little bit slow in doing so. Right above that is the fuel boost pumps. 
Now it's a three position switch, so it needs to be down in the normal position, not in off, because if you have a problem in flight with them off, you're not going to get any fuel transferring from one side to the other. So that's a, an important checklist item that should be done in your pre-flight. For the sake of argument, we'll say that this transfer has taken place and we just turn it off and the transit light goes out. And we'll move in here and we'll get to a normal view and go heads down in the cockpit. Next, I'm going to show you the switch in the pre-flight. This is a test switch. This is going to check all the different things that you need to know about before you take off. Okay, and I've turned it over to the enunciator. System test, okay. It's showing you all the lights. Terrain awareness test start. Terrain awareness system act. Terrain awareness test complete. Left engine fire. Right engine fire. Right. Okay, once all of the enunciations go off, you can move to the next place, which is the anti-skid. And the anti-skid switches down here. You turn it off, but you'll notice up in the anti-skid and op, right above the door not closed or door not locked in the panel. And now you go into over speed, which is just telling you you've gone over the limit. Most pilots flying a citation will at some point find that switch. Okay, and your pedostatic windshield over temp, they're both illuminated. Windshield overheat and pedostatic. Now that pedostatic will stay on until the system is engaged. There is one at the bottom which is basically an empty space that can be wired in for an additional system. Okay, then we go into engine fire. We'll drift over here and show you what that looks like. And that's all your engine fire system. Then you go to landing gear. You get your landing gear warning switch, warning horn switch, which you should be able to extinguish by pushing this button. That's an incorrect system test. It should cancel and the horn stop. Next is battery overheat, which you get a warning for your battery overheat. Switch for that, or the gauge for that is on a co-pilot side. So you can see that the uh, battery temperature switches here. When you you know first start up the battery, and it'll be in, it'll be ambient temperature that the aircraft is in at that moment, and when you start it, it'll go up around 90 to 100, and then slowly cool down. In flight, when you're flying the aircraft, if you find that both uh, generators are working properly, and the battery overheats, you would simply move the battery switch to emergency. That would give you complete use of all aircraft systems, but it would take the battery offline and protect the battery from having a thermal runaway or exploding and going out the bottom of the aircraft, which is a real possibility. All right, at this rate, the only thing we have left is the stick shaker. And that's the sound you hit when you uh, engage the stick shaker. And the shaker actually will move in your hands. You can feel it in the real aircraft. That's warning that you, you're below the safety margin in the angle of attack, which we'll talk about in a little bit further. All right, in this pilot's panel, one of the most used features is going to be your starter and starter disconnect feature. Uh, once you're ready to start the aircraft, you'll push either the right or the left engine to start it. At this point, you'd go down and there are a couple of what are called J-hook switches. They're throttle latches. They're also mentioned as throttle latches in X-Planes. If you want to assign them to a button, you would pull up on those. That would allow the throttle to come up over. You see one throttle comes past the gate and the other one does not. So in other words, to shut the aircraft off, you would need to pull that again and 
move the throttle and this is a little bit of a touchy point and it would go back to the off position no fuel is flowing no ignition sequence is initiated all right the pilot's panel you've got a davtron clock where you select where you want the clock to be in mode the left button and you have a timer and you can start the timer and then there's a button in the center between them and that resets it to zero okay you have your temperature gauge which is basically vertical is freezing so you know if your gauge is right side of freezing you're probably not too worried about uh, de-icing anti-icing equipment and then on this side invisible moisture you would be worried about it and of course this is your angle of attack your best rate of climb is going to be about 0.35 in the real world and your on approach at the right speed will be in the notch at 0.6 and that's very helpful for getting you lined up and you have your battery and uh, voltage selectors for the different gauges and whether it's just battery left or right or just uh, the uh, generators generator switches are listed on either side it's again a three position switch you want to push those down to reset before you go up to generator on to get full function and then you have your avionics and AC power switches and you also have one for left and right inverter you could change that once a day at the beginning of each flight you switch from one to two or two to one unless one of them fails and then you want to use obviously the one that works the green handle switches are all of your anti-ice protection and the one that you're going to do within two minutes of takeoff only because it's a two minute limited item is the pedostatic you don't want to turn that on before you're actually lining up with the runway that transponder and uh, your ignition switches are up here and then you get down here into gyros and uh, position of the gyros I like to leave mine in automatic it spawns in manual which I think is wrong but that's debatable your light switches your recognition lights your strobes, your nav lights, and your ice inspection wing lights. And then, of course, like I said, your ignitions are a pre takeoff item that uh, is like pedostatic ignitions. And uh, your beacon is over here, your passenger advisory and seatbelt light is here, your standby gyro. And this is your lighting panel across the bottom here, right below the uh, primary flight display and the uh, HSI. Airspeed is, of course, to the left right here. And you have a bug that you can set, which you would normally set to your V1 speed for takeoff. And then if you were doing, uh, once you leave the first phase of flight and use uh, indicated airspeed, you want to make sure you move this first <laughs> before you engage indicated airspeed because if you are at 200 knots and you hit indicated airspeed and it's sitting down here at 100 the first thing it's going to do is run out of airspeed really quickly but those those things you'll find out as you go along I reset the standby altimeter to the field elevation and right at the uh, correct spot for uh, the altimeter and this of course is got to be set over here as well let's see if I can get an altimeter no batteries radios aren't on at any rate you can if you know the field elevation where you are you can basically set it to the correct altitude and they all match up pretty much exactly if you do that all right down below here is the parking brake handle 
This is the control column lock, you know, the surfaces lock. This is your emergency brake handle, which once your gear is lowered manually, or if your brakes fail, is available to you to use to stop the aircraft in normal mode of landing gear or emergency extension. What you would do is pull back on that handle and it basically floods a nitrogen bottle into the brake lines so that it forces the brakes to be on. And every time you pull it out, when you push it back to zero, you completely release all of the pressure that's been trapped in the system. And it works off of an air bottle or a nitrogen bottle. So you're not going to get so many pulls before you run out of brakes. You have to keep that in mind that once you pull it, you want to slowly add what you need to stop the aircraft. And then when you release it, you only have a couple more pulls to secure the aircraft. And there's your landing gear handle. There's your fuel flow meter, which is confusing because there was flow on it. And we have not started an engine. We simply moved the thrust lever above. I'll have to see if that duplicates on another occasion. All right. And this is your combined weather and navigational map. And you'll get a navigational map behind the uh, HSI as well. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is stop here, keep these videos at a reasonable length, and I'll pick up again. We'll do the uh, engines and further things of note. But this is to get you started on the 550 from cold and dark and help you with the understanding of all the switch gear in the aircraft. Again, this is Jagjet, and thanks for stopping by. Leave any comments that you might have regarding the aircraft. And remember, life goes on within you and without you. Thank you for stopping by.